Hello everyone. So today I will be speaking about Naxi, which is a web application firewall built as a model for Nginx. So um, as a penetration tester, uh, web application security is one of our main focus. And we are very frequently facing web application firewalls. They are both open source or proprietary softwares. And the most thing is that they have a very uh, different quality and security. Uh, most of them, actually, the huge majority of them, relies on a um, blacklist approach, a bit like antivirus, where they will maintain basis of signatures, which uh, are used to identify potential attacks. So the issue with this model is that uh, nowadays we have more and more languages, more and more attackers, and the languages are more and more versatile. So. Uh, for those of you who follow the subject of web application firewall, you will see that there is, there is very, very frequent updates of the signatures. So in the meanwhile, uh, when, for example, an attack comes out, until the uh, signature isn't out, you might be vulnerable, even if you have a web application firewall. So this is the whole idea behind Naxi, is that I wanted to uh, run away from the blacklist model for various reasons. So Naxi uh, acts in a model that is way closer to a classic network firewall than a web application firewall because it will rely only on a very uh, short uh, core wall set which for most of them only um, are only one or two characters that are used in most uh, web attacks and exploitation techniques uh, such as single codes, double codes, brackets, parentheses, etc., etc. So the global idea is that, by default, uh, Naxi will block any request that will contain some of those characters based on the score mechanism. And it's uh, the duty of the administrator to create the whitelist in order to be able to avoid any false positive in the application. So the advantage of this technique is that it's uh, quite fast because you will have very, very few rules to process and no expensive regular expressions. And one of the bigger advantages is that it's very resilient against obfuscated and complicated attacks. For example, uh, two years ago, the mod security project started a challenge regarding to find by poss possible bypasses into mod security. And if you look at it, you will find out that most of them realize all the bypass rely on very complex attacks that will avoid the filters and the transformations that must be done by those firewalls that works on the blacklist system. Because when you work on a blacklist system, you will have to apply most of the time regular expression on the incoming queries. So in order for your regular expression to be efficient and not too complicated, you will have to transform the data before giving it to the regular expression engine, which, which can lead to potential bypasses. Uh, on the other hand, uh, this positive model means that you will have higher false positive rates. For example, on a default website, like say a blog or something like this, if you have uh, user comments and the user will input quotes or words that are SQL keywords, for example, Naxi might think that it's a potential attack and will block it. So you will have to perform a training to tell Naxi that this is something that you want to allow in this specific place. Avoiding to have big base of a regular expression and signatures makes the software run very fast. Uh, you can see it. I won't have time to go into details on benchmarks, but if you go on the Google code space, you will see some benchmarks. And it's quite fast regarding um, web application firewalls that actually relies on big set of rules. And the last thing is that you don't have to perform any updates on the core rules because there's no uh, definitive attack signatures. On the other end, you can still use it on a blacklist model, if, even if it's not designed for something like this. There are some side projects that are maintaining some Naxi rule set, for example, to uh, block known scanners based on a user agent or to block some very specific attacks for those of you that don't, don't want to take the risk to apply a positive model. And as you will see a bit later, the rule syntax is way simpler than uh, usual rule syntax for blacklist methods. So here is typically the syntax of a rule. Uh, <coughs> this syntax is valid for both whitelist and um, core rules. So 
Basically, it's a pattern that can be a string uh, of our regular expression, even if the core rule sets uh, nearly only used uh, basic strings for performances. You will have what we call magons. This is why you want to look uh, in the incoming request for this kind of patterns and a score. So for each location, for those of you who are familiar with Nginx, because Naxi is configured at the location level. So even for one website, you can have different rule sets that will apply in different parts of the website. And you will have, uh, of course, a message explaining what is the current thread that is detected. So in uh, each location or in your global Naxi configuration, you will be able to set up check rules that say, I will block the request if the score is above, for example, eight for XSSs or even more, depending on the um, tightness of your configuration you want to set up. So when it comes to whitelists, as for classic application firewall, uh, sorry, network firewall, what you want is to have the tightest as possible whitelist. For example, uh, I will have a forum on my website and I want to allow users to uh, input many things because as I'm working in security, people are mostly discussing about XSS and SQL injection, so I don't want to block all the comments. But you can as well have uh, more wide rules in order to limit the number of whitelists you will have to set up. For example, uh, if you, have, uh, you use cookie with Google Analytics, it will use various characters such as parentheses or pipes into the cookie that might be considered by Naxi as offensive, but you want to whitelist them. But you don't want to whitelist it on every page, so you can just make a whitelist that will apply to all the uh, HTTP headers called cookies. So with uh, this kind of syntax, you can have very tight wi uh, whitelist, but you can uh, as well, when you are lazy or you don't have time, put something that is uh, more laxist. So um, as it can be quite painful to write by hand all your whitelists, Naxi comes with various tools that will help you to make this configuration as painless as possible. So this is what we call learning mode. Because when in production mode, Naxi will drop the request as soon as uh, one of the limit score is reached, and it will simply redirect it to another location that is defined by the configuration. So you can do whatever you want. You can, for example, re reject the user to a page with a captcha to report fal potential false positive. So for the whitelist configuration, you will have small uh, Python tools that will help you to generate the whitelist based on, for example, the rates of exceptions regarding the total traffic. So this can be done either from the logs or in live, where you will set up a specific location while in learning mode and have a small Python diamond that will listen in this location, catch the uh, potential malicious request in order to help you to decide whether it's a real attack or just a false positive. So uh, Naxi is a Nginx model, so it will uh, hugely benefit from uh, the Nginx strengths because Nginx supports uh, Lua and so on. So uh, Naxi can use um, various dy dynamic directives in order to, be, to modify its behavior at runtime. For example, you don't want to uh, block users that come from tr trusted IPs, so you can set up a small Nginx script in your directly in your Nginx configuration to say if the user comes from this or this IP, uh, don't turn on uh, Naxi or simply let it in learning mode because you don't want to configure it for your back office, for example. As it's Lua, you can do more and more than this. You can even, for example, decide that a user that successfully authenticated on the web server uh, does not have to uh, be controlled by the web application firewall. So this gives you um, huge possibilities and so on. And as well, it's very useful when you have a seed that is uh, fastly evolving because you, when, whenever you set up a new web page, you don't want to turn the whole seed back into learning mode and open it to potential attacks. So you will be able to turn on, for example, whitelist only for a few URLs. Uh, as uh, reporting is very important because when you have a web application firewall, it's 
good to know or things that you are safe, uh, but you will need to know as well, track potential false positive and have reporting on the real threat that you are encountering. So uh, those same Python tools can help you generate uh, various reporting and graphics uh, to know uh, what kind of attacks you are facing, and it is as well very useful when you do when you are doing learning because, for example, when you will have a seat with very high traffic, you might have uh, as well as legitimate users uh, hackers trying to break in while you are in learning mode, and it can be quite difficult to uh, differentiate between legitimate requests and illegitimate requests. So those demons will help you by, for example, when they suggest a whitelist, they will show you this is the uh, part of the HTTP request we captured uh, when the exception was catched and you can decide by yourself whether it's a positive or false positive uh, signature. So uh, before ending, so Naxi is now uh, out for uh, one year and a half. Uh, it has been uh, tested quite a lot. It is, even if the project is uh, young, it has been already used on very big sites because there's uh, at least one top 5,000 website that is using it in production. So this is a few millions user per month. Thank you very much. Do you have any question? Okay, uh, are you planning to port this for Apache? Because obviously engines is not uh, so widely spread like Apache. N n not at all, uh, for various reasons. Uh, actually, I wrote this software because uh, I needed it for my company. Uh, we are doing penetration testing, but as well hosting, and uh, mod security or Apache is not a real reverse proxy or cannot be used uh, as such in uh, big infrastructures, in my opinion. Will it work uh, with Nginx used as a proxy? Sure, it does work. Actually, in my company, we are using it mainly as a reverse proxy because the uh, end servers are the Apaches, but it does work as well, both as a reverse proxy or as an end server. Another question? Thank you very much. No, no, we still have a question. Ah, sorry. The tool which you sh showed uh, in the second last slide about this graph, uh, is it part of the Nexi? Yes, so actually uh, Nexi itself is just a SIEM uh, model for Nginx developed in C, but it comes with other tools that you can use for reporting and help with learning. So this is part of Nexi, but not the, it's not in C, it's something that you will uh, run directly on your web server. For example, from logs, you can uh, cron it to have daily reports of potential attacks and see where are the attacks coming from. For example, the geolocalization is quite useful because if you see uh, many exceptions coming from the country where you expect your customers to come from, you might think I might have an issue in my configuration, so I might have a look at it again. Uh, as you are using whitelist, uh, I guess it's not usable for um, shared hosting. Sorry, so can can you use it? Can you use it for shared hosting? Uh, I guess no, because you are oh, using uh, whitelist, so uh, it can't be. Uh, uh, actually, uh, many many sites. Yes, actually, you can use it for uh, shared hosting in a quite. Um, in a different way, because as there is a learning mode, you can decide to just use it as an uh, IPS, or actually no, IDS, so just watch for requests, but you can very easily plug it on fail to ban, for example. So you would say a few users can trigger false positives, but if a user triggers 20 false positives in less than a minute, it's probably someone trying to scan your website, for example. 